Hi, this is Chuck Martin, editor of AI and IoT at InformaTech. We're here in Austin, Texas. I'm happy to say I've got with me Tyler Folkman from Ben Labs, Chief Technology at AI. So welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. So for anyone who doesn't know, tell us what Ben Labs is and what it does. So Ben Labs is an AI company that focuses really on human attention and trying to help people understand what drives that attention. So for example, in influencer marketing with creators on YouTube or Instagram, we really help not just marketers, but anyone creative understand who their audience is, how to really reach them creatively and with AI. And then our goal really is to use data and intelligence to make that better so that people can really do what they enjoy faster, more efficiently with better results. But Ben stands for Branded Entertainment Network. Where does entertainment yeah. come into all this technology? Yeah, so entertainment for us is like the core of it. Like we really do believe we want to empower anyone to create. And so that entertainment, whether it's a YouTube video or a full feature film, is so critical to us because we think that's just part of art. It's part of our history. And so we really want to empower that entertainment through data and technology. And it's really about product placement in, in movies and social media and in, in everything? Yeah, some of what we do for sure. So like uh, the most recent Barbie movie, we had a bunch of GM cars in there. Um, you know, your favorite TikToker or YouTuber, we've probably put brands in there. But we really are trying to go past just um, product placement and influencer marketing and help across any platform really understand data and the entertainment that's in it. So you're an extreme high tech. <laughs> How does Barbie connect with you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's great content. Um, it, we but, actually, but how did that come about? Yeah, so really, fortunately for us, Barbie has always been like a GM. If you look at some of their products, like GM cars is part of the Barbie model, and we've worked with GM for a long time. So like getting them in was pretty easy. But generally on product placement, we try to look at the data and the brands that we know and try to find real opportunities that will be good not just for the brands, but also for the audience. Like it's really important for us that we're not just putting content and brands together for no reason, but that when an audience views that entertainment that they're like, oh, that makes sense or that, that made the content better. So like getting you know, GM into Barbie just made so much sense. It's part of their whole you know, Barbie landscape. But for some of the other things like ADP, getting it into a TV show where it really fits into the vibe and like the, the, net, the messaging is really important to us. So for Barbie, so I don't want to harp yeah, on it, but it's such a big it. thing in the, in the yeah. public. Uh, does, does the GM then go to the, the, the Barbie movie makers and say, mm. hey, we'd like our car in there? Or do you go to them? How does that come? Yeah, so they work with us, and then we can go talk to the Barbie producers and like make sure that they have the right cars that they need, that they're the right color, obviously, for Barbie. And we kind of manage the whole logistics to make sure it, it goes off successfully, they have everything they need. And do, do the movie makers always say, okay, we'll use that? <laughs> Not always. I think we're quite good at only reaching out when it makes sense. Right. So, you know, we're very successful with it, but they do care. I mean, movie makers are creative people. They care about their craft and about the audience. So first and foremost on their mind is, does it fit with the, the theme? Um, and so we try really hard to make sure that it does, and then it really enhances the, the experience and doesn't, like, take away from it. So you're, in addition to being at Ben Labs, obviously, you're also involved in the industry overall. Um, I wonder if you can talk a bit about what, what your peers, your colleagues, um, or at least people below you, <laughs> there aren't many colleagues up there, but. No, there's <laughs> colleagues for sure. Uh, it, what's the view in the, in the market, in your group these days, internally, like when you look at things like Gen I, so like, yeah, we all knew that. <laughs> um, I mean, it, what is the view? Is it cynical? Is it, hmm. oh, the, the rest of the world's finally coming along? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that it's honestly surprising to I think a lot of people in the industry how like quick it came, which like we've known it's been worked on and like, you know, GPT-3 was along, around for a while and like you could use it. I think a lot of people were surprised how well the chat functionality worked with like the context and how broad it could go. And now I think we're all just really excited about like how much further can we push this what areas can we use it in? It's really like a new type of technology, almost like the internet. And it's like, there's so many applications. Like, what can we do with it? How can we use it? How can we push it further? So it really feels like we're at the forefront of like a new age in some ways where we see that this can work and it can be very powerful, but it's just the beginning. So in, in, in your peer group, do you all talk about, hey, should we try this? Like, like collectively, mm. uh, because you could be in different, different industries, different yeah, markets. Totally. Um, is that how it works? Yeah, we're always like, should we try this? Like, even just like, you have a crazy idea, or should we throw it into like a large language model? Or should we see if it can generate this image? Or like, I think it's a cool place to be in because you can just keep throwing stuff at it, see where it works, where it doesn't. 
And then those failures can help you figure out like how to make it better, how to build new technology, new products, and make it more special, really. So, yeah. So in your, in your product placement, which you're obviously is using AI, looking at the market and the product, do you see a time where uh, chat GBT typed or GBT4, mm. GBT9 yeah. start, starts to uh, basically do a lot of that work for you? Possibly, I think it's still, if that ever happens a far way off, I think that it's hard to, it's easy in some ways to undervalue the human component when your new technology comes out. But I think even with the best of technologies, there's still a real strong human component around like anything, not just product placement, but really anything. Like the human connection isn't going away. So while I do think it will continue to get better at helping us be more efficient and helping us find opportunities and maybe even writing some of the scripts that we're going to use and helping us be more creative, I fundamentally think humans still need that connection. And so I don't think it's replacing that anytime soon. I just think it's going to augment the experience. So I'm just wondering if it writes a script and says, parens, a GM car should probably go yeah. here. Yeah, I think some of that, I think for real, we can use some of these technologies and really tweak them for our use cases where we can analyze unstructured content, whether it's a script or a pre-release of those, an ad for this video or the actual video itself. And the AI can for sure give us suggestions on like a car could go here, here's the brands you work with, maybe you work with this one, and it can get quite advanced. And so that's stuff we're playing with all the time is like how do we use it to help us be better? But really it's just like identifying the brand is just the first step. So I think there's still a lot more steps that humans are critical for. But you also use technology to predict how successful something's going to be, don't you? Yeah. So could you know that this car would be better than that car in the X mm. movie? We can definitely make predictions around it. And it's interesting to think about, <laughs> one, how good are they is an interesting thing. Two is even if they're really good, you have to convince people that they're good. <laughs> so there's a lot of bias in entertainment around like what they think will work and what is going to fit their brand, which isn't necessarily bad. Like maybe something will predict, you know, something might perform better and maybe it's more off from what your path wants to be as a brand. So you don't go that way. So I think a lot of what we're trying to figure out is how do we merge the best of humans and the best of technology and make them coexist well. So could you, with your capabilities, could you actually say, uh, look, look at people mm. and say this company needs that kind of people, needs mm. more of these? People in what way? Hiring. Hiring. Ah, we've not touched hiring yet, no. So we haven't done but, anything But technologically, is it, is it conceivable that the kind of thing you're using could be used in some other application but by somebody else yeah. later on? Yeah, I think so, for sure. Uh, I think that's where it gets exciting with some of these like more foundational models like GPT or BART or something like that, that they can be used in so many different ways. And like almost in some ways, creativity is your limita limiting factor. And if you can be creative and then don't take it on face, right? Because it might tell you something wrong or hallucinate or create you know something that's not factual, but it really can help you think outside the box. So like if you feed it some context about like your company and your needs and your open roles, it will for sure generate something back to you, whether it's good or bad is still kind of being worked out, but it will help you kind of at least maybe get a different opinion on the matter. So what are, your, what are some of your challenges you're looking at these days in terms of like the next big thing you guys want to accomplish? Yeah, for us, we care a lot about video. So one of our big challenges is like, how do we unlock in some ways what ChatGPT did for text, something similar for the video space? So much of what we create in entertainment and content is video. If you're on YouTube, TikTok, even Instagram now, it's all mostly video. How do we really take this technology and take it to the next level to be more foundational across that type of content is really something we're looking at. So a year from now, we're sitting here. <laughs> what are we going to be talking about? Whew, a year from now, my guess is we'll be talking a lot more about generative images. I think generative video will have come a long way so that people are actually generating videos more from like AI prompts. And my guess is the technology will be much more productized. Right now we talk a lot about like prompt engineering and that's more of a symptom of a bad product. Like if you have to be an expert on how to prompt the product, it's a bad product. But over the next year, these products are gonna get a lot better. You're not gonna have to be an expert. It's gonna be built into your workflow. It's gonna be much more common for you to open up a new experience and expect an AI assistant or language or something there for you. And if it's not there, it's gonna feel like a sub, sub tier product which we're not there yet, but I bet in the next year it will make a long progress. Well, I look forward to that conversation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.